My name's Chris, Cranky Chris Copeland, and I'm a zoologist who has worked with devil and quoll for the last 10 years. Some of that work incorporates trapping and passive infrared camera systems and something that I have always been interested in is the idea that the thylacine could still be out there. I've done a lot of work talking about thylacine, devil, quoll to the general public and every day people ask me do you think thylacine could still exist and for 10 years I have flat out said no. But these days, for a couple of different reasons, I've had to reevaluate and rethink that statement. And one of the reasons is literally the suspected arrival of European red fox in Tasmania. The state government since 2001 has thought that the fox has been present on this island. And if that's true, that's an ecological nightmare. But what it's done is made me think about the idea of how many thylacines would you need to, and what would you need to have them still present on this island? And realistically, about 5,000 thylacines could have been supported by the 64,000 square kilometer island. And that animal was in the same form for about seven million years. And then ultimately within 20 years under a bounty system, they would have had to adapt to being vermin, shot at, poisoned at every opportunity, which would have really selected for elusive individuals. From there, critical mass of animals is usually thought to be about 10% of the original population. So if you take the idea that there was 5,000 thylacines, realistically, you'd have to have somewhere around five to 600 still present on the island to have prevented extinction. And Bottom line, with 500,000 people on the island, 3 million visitors a year, a lot of mining, forestry, it's probably fairly unlikely that that species still exists in those sorts of numbers with the evidence that we do have, cryptic or not. There are two forms of extinction. There's sort of total number zero and lack of genetic viability. And realistically, I have no problem with the idea that a handful of thylacines still exist on this island. Whether we would uh, determine that they're there or not would realistically depend on how elusive they were and realistically whether people were out there looking for them. And this interests me because ultimately they do believe that there are quite a large number of foxes in this state and no one realistically sees them and everyone is skeptical that they're here just purely because no one sees them. And there are about 400 thylacine sightings in the last 75 years. So the level of evidence is, is there, whether it's credible or not, who knows? And guys, I'm not saying that I believe thylacine is out there. I'm not a cryptozoologist. I am a really skeptical guy. I need to see numbers, but realistically, I'm very interested in the possibility of thylacine being out there and what this animal would need to survive and whether that resource is present in this day and age with all the logging and the mining and the urban sprawl and the conversion of Tasmania to pasture, is there enough resource to support a population of 32 kilogram average size solitary carnivores? And what we've done, Bill Flowers and Jenny Rowlands and I, have set up the Thylacine Research Unit, or TRU for short, and we're just documenting videos and evidence that we collect looking at this very issue. You can join the argument and have a look at what we do by jumping on our website www.thylacineresearchunit.org or you can sort of watch us on social media and it's at thylacine team on twitter or www.facebook.com forward slash thylacine research unit and join the argument. Guys we upload videos, we upload famous sightings and photos Jump online, join the argument, and help us explore the possibilities of whether this animal's still out there or not.